So hi everyone, welcome to the iSPRINT webinar series where every week we talk about e-learning trends, share iSPRINT tips and tricks and cover clients' cases. I'm Nadia, a community manager at iSPRINT and I will be the moderator for today's session. And today we're going to cover a very interesting topic. We're going to talk about how managers can help to ease stress at work. And to cover this topic, I have with me today Jeffrey Ong, a strategist, international speaker, coach, and trainer. And for those of you who are not familiar with iSpring, we are your start point in e-learning. We provide an authoring tool and an LMS, as well as unparalleled support on your way to impressive results. But we believe that tools are only part of great success. And that's why we provide this webinar series. So I hope you enjoyed this session. And at this point, uh, let me pass the mic over to presenter to start their presentation. Hello. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeffro. Um, just want to quick check whether you could see me clearly or if there's anything that's missing on screen on the left and right. Um, could you just type in into the chat? If you could see me clearly, just type one. All right, Janeline. We have Valerie, Jerome, Leslie, Nadia. Yes, with a smiley. Thank you. All right. So we have a number of participants here, All right? So um, I'm told that I only have a very limited time with you. So I'm going to do my best to cover um, the topic on how managers can ease stress at work, you know, help those who are struggling. Now, before we continue, uh, a very quick thing that I'd like to do with all of you here is to just get to know each other, right? So um, can I invite all of you here to do this one thing, introduce your short name, your location, and how did you feel in your past week, in the past week, right? So on a scale of one to 10, one being terrible, 10 feeling amazing, right? So could you just do that in just one sentence? I'll give an example. So I'm Jeffro, I'm from KL, and I'm feeling at a number eight, right? So go ahead and type that into the chat, your short name, where you're from, and how did you feel in the past week in a number? I'm going to give you a couple of uh, moments to go type that into the chat. Lastly, from the Philippines, eight. Jaline, oh, okay, right? Jaline is from Philippines as well, number seven. All right, hello, my Filipino friends. Jerome from Singapore, six. Mizuho from Penang, Malaysia. Oh, I'll be going to Penang next week. <laughs> Rose from Philippines, all right, eight. Uh, Jerome from Singapore, six. Maria from US, feeling eight. Okay, lovely, lovely. Now, you might be wondering why we're doing this. Uh, it's, it's beyond just introduction. What we want to do is um, diving right into it, uh, where we ask about someone's well-being as well. Oh, we have uh, eyes. Oh, eyes from Thailand. Wow. <laughs> Thailand, and you're feeling eight. Fantastic. Now, what we're doing here essentially is something called a emotional check-in or a well-being meter, right? Um, normally, if you were to ask someone, how do you feel? How are you? The common re response you may get would be, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm okay, which doesn't really tell you a lot of things. And if that person doesn't elaborate further, um, it can be a conversational kill like it gets stuck there so what i like to do is i like to turn it around especially at the workplace and ask hey on a on a scale of one to ten um how are you feeling and that's exactly what we did right so what does it tell us see if a person is on a scale of say for example um more than seven eight nine or ten that person has has things going well um that's definitely but what we want to do is to encourage the person to keep what works, keep doing what works, continue whatever that they're doing that makes them happy or satisfied or so forth, and maybe encourage them to help someone. So if you're feeling eight, nine or 10, you're in that position to inspire someone to positively influence someone. Now, for those of you who are five to seven, what is important is that you schedule rest and recreation. It could be you're at a point where you feel stressed, but you could still get things going on. And that's great. 
uh, but I would recommend that you would have some rest and recreation, some rest and fun so that it boosts you up from a five, hopefully to a seven, eight or nine. And from a seven, hopefully, you know, you go up the, the gauge and you go and stay in the green zone. Right. So that's exactly what you could do. And what you could also do for your team is to let them know, hey, I think you really need a nest, uh, you really need a rest. Take 15 minutes off, schedule it now. If if not, try and leave earlier and get some rest. Now, for those of you here, you're below five, four, three, two, one. Um, that's really not a healthy place to be. Because if you're feeling down, um, it could affect your emotions, it could affect um the people around you it could also affect your productivity and performance You're, you may not be as focused as you like to so this is a definite sign that you need plenty of rest if not you may need some help and support at work or you could be doing a lot of work that doesn't really require your time and skill so you may want to delegate away so similar thing if you see this with your colleagues um whether it's your team or your boss they may be taking in a little bit too much, right? So you could suggest something that would help them, right? So this is a simple thing that we could do on a scale of one to 10, how it is, it will give you an idea on how to con how to continue that conversation, right? So that's a little thing. Now, since we have a little time, what I'm gonna do is to really, really just introduce myself really briefly for you. So with that being said, let me go ahead with this. So my name is Jeffro. Uh, for those of you here who don't know, <laughs> That is not a typo, that is my name. See, there's a story behind my name. Back in 2008, uh, where I was still in a university lecture hall, I remember this really clearly. I was seated at the back and the lecture was in the front. And what happens is the lecturer would call us by name to take attendance and they say, Jeffrey, would you put your hands up? <laughs> I put my hands up. And in that moment, I would see to the left and to the right, that there would be also some of my college mates that put their hands up. So I was confused. I could see on your face that they were also confused and I could see the lecturer in the front equally confused. <laughs> now, when people are confused, they tend to look left and they look right. And there's just these awkward moments of silence, just like this. And I realized I didn't like it. So I wanted to make that change and I came up with the name Jeffro, because the O in my name stands for only one. <laughs> and uh, well, that has been the most helpful thing I did uh, in college time, because my college mates would remember me easily. It was easier for the lecturer. It was easier for my colleagues later on in, um, in the work life and for my working partners, my business partners, my clients and so forth easy for them to find me not only on social media but also on the phone book lesser things to type <laughs> now um, that's a little bit about my name uh, hopefully everyone here is familiar with that already now what do i do i do in the areas i work in the areas of emotional intelligence right eq um, if you've heard about eq before um, could you just type yes if emotional intelligence or eq is new to you could you type no Oh, sorry, if you've not heard about it and it's new to you, could you just type no? Yes, if you've heard about it, you know it. No, if you don't know it. Could you just type that into the chat? Yes, you know about it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so you know about it. Great. Then I don't have to go down into details on that. <laughs> Lovely. All right, so let me just refresh everyone's mind and make it into a summary. Um, so EQ simply means that you understand, you manage, and you use your emotions in a positive way to help others. And not only that, but also to help yourself, right? So in short, that's what EQ is all about, especially in the application at the workplace. Now, I'm very thankful that um, in the past three years, I've been given the opportunity to train, coach, and facilitate more than 20,000 individuals, professionals um, at workplace or even in their personal lives. And I'm very grateful to be working very closely with them. And I deal really close in three areas, uh, managing stress, managing conflict, and in leadership and people management. Right? So these are the three areas that I work really closely. And I believe this, if you become skilled in these three areas, you can turn your daily frustration into fulfillment. And that's exactly what I would like to share with all of you here. Some little tips and tricks on how you could help your team or you could help yourself at the workplace.
right? So uh, just in case if you're wondering who are the partners that I've worked with before, um, so I'm going to flash it out on screen here. These are just some brands and some names that I've worked with, and I'm very thankful that I'm we have a continuous uh, partnership even today. Um, so these are just some brands. If you don't know them, well, you get to learn about them later on. Now, uh, just some works that I've done before. So just to show you. So this is about leadership in the workplace, leadership in, uh, this is applied EQ in leadership at the workplace and we were doing it via remote working. Um, this is another one with healthcare professionals where we talk about uh, using applied EQ, emotional intelligence in boosting the way we present and communicate with other people. And this is another one in properties uh, where I had the Pleasure to go down to Joho uh, early this year uh, to do on managing performance. Right, so these are the things that I'm going to do. Right, so that's really short thing about what I've covered. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share with you a video, and this video will tell you exactly why we're doing this. Right, so uh, I hope you enjoy this video, and I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to have to adjust the audio here, so. Uh, just bear with me a while. So I'm going to change the audio right now. <laughs> right, so I hope you enjoyed that uh, little video there. Um, I know it's not a good thing to laugh at people's misfortune. I like to take this as a point of learning, right? So here's a very short video on how not to relax and how to get injured instead. And I also hope that this serves as a little reminder when you get frustrated in doing something, don't just keep pushing it, don't just keep going on. Sometimes it's really just best to take a step back and look at things differently. Right, so this is a, I hope this stands not just as a reminder for us, but also a reminder for your team, right? So go ahead and share that, um, the lessons that you've learned from here too, right? So uh, that's a very uh, simple video on why we want to do this. Now, the things that I want to cover uh, with you today is very simple on this few things right here, right? So I like to cover two things, which is to enhance your awareness on what are some things to pay attention to, whether it's yourself or even your team, and the second thing is the practical application. And we're going to go through some empathy techniques. So you're going to be experiencing this along with me, not just hearing it and, and, and you know, get going with it. Now, my aim is to help all of you here to become emotionally intelligent leaders who are inspiring, you're well-respected, and also well-loved, right? So that's my goal for you. If there's anything you want to take from this, 
I really sure hope that you can practice this in your daily lives. All right, so let's go on with the first thing, which is the awareness part, the science. So why is this important is that we want to tackle the issues, not just at the symptom level, not just you know when we feel like it, but when we pay attention to what's really happening, we get to prevent it from escalating. We get to prevent things from worsening. Right, so this is something that um, I really believe in, and it's also backed up by research and statistics. So one of the statistics that shows is that there are many professionals who are facing burnout. In fact, 77% of professionals who are experiencing burnout, and this was before the pandemic. And I can pretty much say this, that during the pandemic, there are more stresses and there are a lot more who are facing burnout, right? So whether you're working from home, you're in a hybrid, um, or you're forced to be in the workplace because there's no other choice, it is still the same. There is an increased amount of stress, you know, worries and so forth. Now, I like to take our attention to learning this part. If you could imagine yourself in a room with three other people, so there's four of you in this room, right? Out of these four people, three will get burnout. One will be okay. Now, there's two possibilities that this one person could be okay. Possibility one is that this person is really well in managing his or her stress, in working out the things, in coping with um, changes. That's good. Possibility number two, this person is the cause of stress for everyone else. <laughs> That's why this person may not have any issue. And I hope you are not possibility number two. <laughs> now, Jokes aside, uh, we also want to be a, a reminder that since this is so common, uh, we have to pay attention to it. Um, so let's increase not just our awareness, but a social awareness. So burnout doesn't happen overnight. Burnout ha doesn't happen just because you want it to or because you will it. Burnout happens in stages. That's exactly why I want to cover this. So imagine yourself like a smartphone, like a smartphone, right? And you start off maybe at 100%. The more you, the moment you use your apps, you turn on your screen, that's where you will start using energy. That's where your battery starts draining. That's probably um, very similar with us. When we're feeling recharged and we start doing something, we start draining our energy and that's where we call the stress level. That's where we start triggering all these things. Now, at the beginning, all of us here, we could handle it fine, right? You have the energy, you have the mood, you have the focus, you could handle that. Now, as the day go by or as the weeks go by, a long time, you'll notice that the energy keeps going down. So just like your phone, the more you use, the lower the battery, the more back, the more energy gets drained. So what happens when it comes down to a 10, 15%, it becomes slow. I'm not sure if any of you here, you have um, faced this before, but if you have gone down to a 10 to 15% on your smartphone, then you probably start seeing some apps slowing down or your phone and the overall is not performing the way you want it to. Now that's very similar to us at a fatigue level. You know, when you start feeling tired, lethargic, you just kind of shut down, you're not performing that well, you're slowing down. Like on your smartphone, if that happens, sometimes you use the app, it could crash. Sometimes you use it hangs. Sometimes your phone just restarts itself or just shut down and you will have to reboot itself. Now, the whole idea is that your smartphone is trying to conserve power. So if you continuously do that without charging, what happens next is that it keeps going all the way down to a 0%. Now, what happens when a smartphone is at a 0%? It shuts off completely. The screen goes black. It's flat out. You can't do anything. You can try to boot it. It just won't turn on. And that's exactly like us when we are at the burnout mode. We feel completely tired. We just have no mood, no energy, no time, uh, anything else, nothing else to give to others. Hence, when you have friends who go by and ask, hey, Jeffro, would you want to hang out after work? Oh, no, I I'm just tired. I think I'm just going to rest. Or, hey, Jeffro, would you like to join us for um, a meal after work? Uh, you guys go ahead. I'm, I'm just tired. I just want to rest. Right. So that's already a sign of a burnout. Right? You're completely dry out. You just can't do anything. You want to go back to rest. Now, probably it's okay. Some people can take it once or twice. But if this happens repeatedly over time, weeks, months, 
what this person would have is a habitual burnout. And a habitual burnout is bad because it starts making you feel like there is no other meaning besides just this state of feeling tired, bad, and you might start feeling a little bit lonely, a little bit depressed, and generally you just don't feel like anything is worth doing anymore, right? So we want to avoid that completely. And let me ask you this, which one is simpler for you? Which one is faster for you? A, charge your phone from 50 to 100, would that be faster? Or B, charging your phone from a zero to 100? A or B, which would that be? Could you type it into the chat? Which is faster to charge your phone from 50 to 100 or from a zero to 100? A, right? A, generally it would be A. Mizuho with the B, interesting. Maybe you have a turbo charger there. <laughs> I know recently there are phones with turbo charger and so forth. Now the problem is it's not really a sustainable thing when you're always charging at a super high speed. At the same time, I just want all of us here to remember that we are not like the machines, right? And we are actually less durable than machines because the more you go from a zero to hundred, zero to a hundred, you start feeling weaker. You start feeling draggy you start feeling it in your body right that that it's just that uncomfortable feeling right so i would like to remind all of you here that you are really not that smartphone or that turbo charger right you are just a human no matter how hard you work your body has its own limits so before you break that limit let me just say this first before you break that limit you might want to do something about that so my my recommendation right now is to rest as soon as possible whenever you're done with something Rest maybe just 10, 15 minutes as a start. If you need more, go do that, schedule it. If not, then at least that 10, 15 minutes will make a difference. Now, what are they to pay attention for, right? So between stress and burnout, there are some flags that we want to pay attention, the red flags. And I hope that you could see these starting now if you haven't seen it before, or if you have felt it, you have noticed it before, it serves as a reminder for you and your team to pay careful attention, especially for your mental health, for your physical health, and for your overall well-being, because they will impact your performance at work, your relationships, and your thinking ability. All right, so let us go to the red flags. So let me show you here the red flags that we need to pay attention to. And this is only the top five common ones which I have picked out for you, the ones that I normally see and the ones that I normally hear. They are beyond five, right? But these are the five common ones. So the first one, if you see someone who is frequently tired, and I'm not saying about yesterday OT and then today you feel tired. I'm talking about over a period of time, days to weeks, maybe months, and you see them really exhausted or you feel that exhaustion. And you hear someone say this, I wish I could sleep in bed all day. And they don't just say it once. They may have said it repeatedly and you know that they are probably overworked or really tired or lack of rest. So this is a first sign. Second sign, a warning sign to you is if someone who has always been a very relaxed and calm person suddenly gets agitated or moody or angry or frustrated in that moment, this could be a sign. And it doesn't happen once, maybe it happens a few times, and that's something you want to pay attention to. Possibly, there are a lot of negative emotions that is building up, a lot of negative experiences that is right now making this person feel overwhelmed at this level, you know? And when someone is at this level, all it takes is just a little trigger that could not be an issue last time, but right now, this little trigger could help this person blow up, right? So you might want to just pay attention to this if you find someone who easily gets triggered recently, right? So that's number two. Number three. When you hear someone say something negative or complain about something over and over and over again, and maybe you might get a little bit uh, worked up because this person is just always saying the, the, the negative things, right? So if you have someone like this, or if you feel that you've been saying something negatively over and over and over again, you might want to pay attention to that. Now, this at the beginning probably would not have any issue, and it's okay to vent out. 
But the problem is if it becomes a habit and it stays there, what it happens is that it impacts our thinking. See, we know when we have negative thoughts, it affects us emotionally in a negative way. And because of that, it influences what we do. We start doing something that is not what we wanted in the first place. And because of that, we'll get the results that is what that is opposite of what we want to have. Right? So negative thoughts leads to negative feelings, leads to negative actions, and brings negative results. So that is a tail, that is a really bad sign if you do find yourself or someone else in this state. Right, so this is the third flag. The fourth flag is if you find someone who is there, but you're not there. You know the thing, sometimes you, you have people in a meeting and they are there listening to you or listening to you. And then you say, Jeffro, um, so what do you think about this point? And they go, huh? Oh, um, uh, so they're not there. Then they're probably just physically there, but spiritually away. So they could be very distracted or they could be having certain circumstances that is not allowing them to be in that moment with you, to be focused. So this is one of the warning signs. Now, again, if it happens repeatedly, then this is something that you might want to start taking action with them. The next thing is, or the last one that I want to share with you, is if you find someone redrawing. You know, like I mentioned just now, when you feel tired, you just want to be away from things. Now, if this happens to you or if this happens to others around you, the things that they like doing, the things that was once fun for them, but now they're just staying away, saying no to it, that's a, that's a sign. That's a bad sign, right? Normally, people are in a, in a very low state and that's why they want to get away from everyone else. They are suddenly a loner, right? So these are the five things um, that I'd like you to pay attention to if you do have or if anyone at your workplace has this. Now, um, so far that I've shared these five, um, I just want to quickly check with you. Have you seen this at your workplace or have you personally experienced this before? Um, would you mind sharing with me, right? So if you have seen this at your workplace, you could um, tell me, you know, if, if it's something that is often um, or if you personally faced this before, could you just type the number of that flag that you have experienced before, right? Could you do that in the chat? If you've seen this at the workplace, maybe you can just type yes. Sometimes, lastly. Yeah, Valerie, you've seen this happening at the workplace before. Maria, wow, Rose going yes with a capital Y-E-S. <laughs> right, uh, lastly. I don't know if you could unmute yourself or you're able to do that, uh, but maybe a, a simpler way for you is uh, yeah, just to share with me, right? Uh, when you say sometimes, uh, what kind of situation or circumstances would you see this appearing? Oftentimes when there's a lot of work to be done, okay, peak, they call it the peak period. <laughs> Am I right? The peak period. <laughs> Uh, let's see Valerie, Valerie saying yes. Um, yeah, so Valerie, would you mind sharing as well? Uh, in what circumstances would you observe something like this happen? Type it into the chat if that's possible. I, I hope I'm not lagging here. I think when there are deadlines, <laughs> not only deadlines, Valerie, when there are tight deadlines, <laughs> I can resonate with that. Oh, Leslie, can't admit, all right. all right, no worries, no worries, right? Yeah, definitely when there's tight deadlines, people get stressed up. Sometimes they overwork, sometimes they just are overwhelmed with a lot of things and this could pop up. And I hope that the deadlines are not recurring very often. Because if they do, there could be a possible mismanagement in the priorities, right? There could be something that could have been scheduled, but not done well enough, right? So that's why everything is packed at the last minute. So hopefully that's not the case. So the question is, right, 
Jeffro, now that we know that are signs, um, I felt a little bit, I could see some people feeling a little bit, what is it that we could do, right? So I want to share with you the concept first before the, going into what we could do immediately. Um, lastly says, it's so stressful that if you can't even finish an output, oh, it's so stressful if you cannot even finish an output an entire day. So could it, could it be that the work item, that task itself, it's too complicated or it requires a lot more time than what you had planned or expected it to be, right? So it, here, it could be another topic on mismanagement in terms of the expectations and the reality. I do know it happens uh, from time to time and especially in a large organizations, um, there could be miscommunication of the expectations or a misunderstanding of the actual performance. And sometimes when we do fast, it doesn't mean we can do fast for everything else. It could mean that this particular task was simple enough for you to process it quickly. But when it comes to other special tasks where there are certain circumstances that are beyond the normal things, it may take time to investigate, take time to troubleshoot, to work on it before you can get it processing to the next stage. And it could take up twice or three times more than that, right? Working with the HR, working with operations, maintenance, um, even in the packaging inventory from people management, marketing, it happens across all, right? The, there is just no one best way to do everything, right? So that could be a miscommunication or misunderstanding on certain expectation. Um, and that could also be the cause of the stress. So what could managers do when they start seeing this happening at the workplace? Yes, we want to work on the the task immediately. I know some managers like, okay, you know what, Jeffro, if that's a problem, we go down and fix that problem. While that might be ideal, but people being people, we have emotions. And sometimes we just don't want the problem to be fixed first. We want to be shown care, shown acknowledgement. So I want to remind all of us here to do this. For those of us here, if you are suffering, if you've seen suff uh, people suffering or struggling, this is something that I've seen works well. So first thing is this, give your heart, give care, you know, ask about someone's well-being, show concern. Because when we show empathy, we would demonstrate empathy, people feel connected, people feel that there is hope. And that's where they will be more open to hearing suggestion or doing the work. Next thing, offer hands. It's easy to tell someone, do, do this, do that, you know, follow this instruction. But it is more effective if we show them or we offer help, support, or resources. They may not need it, but I believe they will cherish at least there is a form of support. Not everyone needs a template or guidance or reference, but it's good to have because as a support system, as a backup in the event, if you really do need it. Now, words may be so idealistic, but not realistic. Yeah, definitely, right? So when we say something, it's one. When we show them and do with them and give to them, that's the real thing. So that's why I say offer your hands, not just the heart, but your hands. The heart is just the beginning. The hands is what helps the continuation, right? And don't do it in such a way that when someone is now ready to open up to you, and then you start blurting out everything, right? So that, there's an example for this. So let me show you here. This is what I've observed happening. Uh, this may not always be just in this manner, but it's an example of what I've seen happening at the workplace or even in your personal lives. <laughs> when person A and person B talks, uh, many times that I've observed ends up like this. Uh, can I make, can I get you to guess? Can I make you, can I ask you to guess what's happening here? I think you need to wait for them to open up and don't force them. Am I right? Yes, don't force, but there's a way to invite them in. I'll share with you in a bit. Right, so right now, can you take a guess what's happening here between A and B? If you can make a guess, what would that be? What do you think this situation is? Again, no right, no wrong. It's just different perspectives. So I like you to 
um, share with me. What do you think is happening here? Telling what to do, but the person A is not yet ready, or I think kind of annoyed. <laughs> That's a very good uh, observation, lastly. Uh, Rose says A is so stressed, B is pacifying her. <laughs> Could be the case. I'm only getting here to, I'm getting everyone here just to share your observation. Again, it's not necessarily the truth. Um, and I really don't know what's there, but I'd like to hear what do you think this could be? A is fed up with advice from B. <laughs> Mizuho, sounds like you have an experience there. <laughs> All right, so these are the possibilities that, that is happening, right? Um, so let me paint, paint a context here. Uh, if A has finally decided to open up, right? A has finally decided to open up and share and says, you know, I just feel so stressed. Something is just not right at the workplace. I just feel like no one is taking me seriously. And B is listening. But in this case, B says, you know what? I know how exactly you can fix this. I know what you should do. You should do A, B, C. And A is like, oh. And B is like, what? What? Right? So A becomes frustrated because B is not listening. And B is frustrated because he doesn't understand why A is feeling that way. Right? You have a problem. I have a solution. Why not? Let, let, let's get it done, right? Chop, chop. See, that, that's not the case. Uh, in most cases, when someone is going through stress, when someone is going through an anxious time, building up, overwhelm, they really want to be heard first. If they finally open up to you, they want to hear. They want to be heard. They want you to hear them completely. So here's... <laughs> let me see. Let me see. There is a comment that is very interesting. A is fed up from advice from B. I think so too. Keep blubbering, not even listening. Kind of add into stress. Exactly, right? So when someone finally opens up and B just interrupts or B jumps to conclusion, it really just fuels up that anger. And you know what? Sometimes being in the position of A, you may already know what to do. You don't need someone to tell you what to do, but you just need someone to listen to you. And maybe after you share, maybe A, after sharing, will kind of figure out things kind of open up the mind to different possibilities due to that sharing. And this is why when it comes to what to do next, we're going to cover something called the empathy techniques, right? So first things first, important thing is this, always check in. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, is everything okay? You want to ask that. You want to find out really how things are going and just listen in, right? So. This is where you could ask questions like, how are things for you? How are you doing? How are you feeling? Which is something that I really like asking. Um, how are you coping with things? And is everything all right? Now, let me add to this. Asking is everything all right is a more effective way and a powerful way rather than asking is everything wrong or what's wrong. Because you want to frame it in a, positive context. So when you ask, is everything all right? You're essentially getting them to agree with you or disagree with you in that sense without saying that the current problem or the current situation is wrong. When you ask what's wrong, people say nothing's wrong. They may get defensive. There is a chance that they may get defensive and we want to avoid that, right? So asking these five questions, any of these five, would help as the first step. Now, the second step would be this. Second thing, second, wait for a reply. Especially when you are talking with the person face to face. So you ask, hey, how are you feeling? Just wait. Just let that person process and reply to you. What I've observed that is counterintuitive, that is, you know, the opposite reaction is when someone says, hey, how are you doing? Are you feeling okay? You know, is things very stressful? You know, I, are you all right? And you're not giving that person the space to open up. You're just filling up that person with a lot of answers. 
that person might get agitated, that person might get really anxious, that person might walk away. It's a good sign if that person walk away, means that person know what to do. It's a bad sign if that person explodes in front of you. What if she ignores you? That's a very good question. What if that person ignores you? You might just want to give that person a little bit more time, maybe a couple more seconds, look at that person, observe that person. If that person is okay and they just don't want to talk about it, then you move on to the next part, uh, not here, you move on to another part where I want to say, you can just let them know that you're here if they need anyone to talk to and you move away. So if someone ignores you, so if someone, if, I'm assuming that you have a good relationship with this person first. There are many scenarios, but let's assume that you and the person has a good relationship and you say, hey, how are you doing? And maybe Jeffro doesn't reply you and you look, you observe this person seems to be okay. And then you just say this, hey, you know what? Um, if you need anything, um, I'm, I'm open to talk. Um, if you need it, if I'm at an office with this person, if you need anything, I, I'm just going to be over there, right? Just just ping me, nudge me, um, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. And just, just go off. You've done your part. You've done that person a bigger part because the last thing that you want them to feel is that they feel very trapped. They feel very hogged on like, oh, this person just, just at me. They want space. So you're also telling them, I'm going to give you space. I'm concerned about you. I'm going to give you space. I'll be over there. Right? So that, that has really worked for me. And yeah, sure, there'll be times where they never come back to you. But there are moments where this person would actually walk up to you and say, you know, just now you asked if everything's okay. Um, actually, things are not okay. And then you take that next step with them. Right? So this is that part where you can start building that trust. Because it's not about forcing someone to open up. It's about inviting them, making them comfortable, letting them know there will be support if there is. And I've learned this from some of the Western cultures where the parents would do this for the kid. And all they say is a very simple thing. Hey, um, is everything okay? And the kid would like, eh, I'll walk away and stuff. And then the mom just, the mom or the dad would just say this. Hey, you know what? Uh, we're a family. Um, just know that if you have anything to say, you could always open up to us. Um, we want you to know that your home is here and we want you to feel comfortable. We want you to feel safe here. And guess what? The kid would open up, would have the courage to open up or have the option to now think that it's safe at home or a reminder. So we want to do that with them. Right? Give time and space is the best combination indeed, definitely. Whether it's your friends, your colleagues, your boss, your children, sometimes even yourself, that really matters. Now, not just this, I want you to wait for a reply. After you've, wait, you've gotten a reply, then ask for this. So ask this, do you need support or do you need suggestion? Before giving anything, before literally anything else, once they've replied you, listen to that part and then ask, hey, do you need more, do you need support? Or do you just, do you need suggestion? Which means, do you want someone to listen or do you want a fixer? And let them decide. Because if they tell you, I need the suggestion, I need some help, then you go into the suggestion mode. If you need support, then turn on your listening ears. So if I may add, Rose says, if I may add, the personality type um, has to be taken into consideration. Definitely, definitely, right? This is if you're going beyond and over on different areas, you know, more specific part, the personality would then come into place, right? I, I'm saying in general first, let's look at the general perspective. This works. Of course, when you say about personality type, if they're more introvert, extrovert, then in terms of the setup would be important. You don't want to do it in public. You want to do it in private. In terms of um, whether it's work, do people want to talk about work first, then personal or personal first, then work. Um, from my experience wise, dealing with professionals all around the world, I found that the common approach that people tend to be open to is to have that personal touch, but not too long. By the way, don't dwell into the personal touch for too long. It may be uncomfortable, especially if you're not close with that person, but it helps to build that relationship and establish that emotional connection between you and that person. That is what I've seen. That is what I've um, checked in uh, across 
many research and also observations uh, with different teams around the world, right? So now that you've done this part, first thing you've checked in with them, second, you've listened to them and you ask the important question, do you want support or do you want suggestion? If they say they want suggestion, oh no, sorry, if they say they want support, then this is what you should do first. Listen fully to understand. If it's your colleagues, just listen completely. Find out everything that you want to know about that situation. There could be a hidden story somewhere. So listen to understand, not to find keywords and respond to that. Don't do that. Second thing, check how that person feels about that situation or that thing that they've just shared. Example, hey, you know what, Jeffro? I, I feel that things are not going well. Um, there are pile and pile of work that seems never ending, right? I, I just don't know what to do. There's just a lot of deadlines. There's just so many things that are up my throat right now. At home, it's also the same. At work, it's also the same. So what do you want to do after listening to that? You can check with them. So how do you feel about it? How does that make you feel? And they will tell you the next part of that story and you listening, you listening, you listening, just listening. And you could ask if you want to ask what have they done to change things? Um, is there anything that has been working for them? And just find out more about them. Right? So this makes you an empathetic listener. It also tells a person that you truly care and that you're giving them your attention. Now, how do you get someone to keep sharing? <laughs> I like this. Three magic words. You can use this too. It's called tell me more. Tell me more. Hey, um, you know what, Jeffro? Things has been going tough at work. And they keep silent, right, after that? So you say, right, tell me more. You, you know, this thing, um, people are not understanding. Everyone's pushing blame to me. Tell me more about that. You know, it's about that situation that one time and, and, and they will keep telling that story because tell me more invites them to share more. So I would love you to start using tell me more. Many ways that you could use this. Uh, you could use this as an invitational one. You could use this as a, um, as a question. Can you tell me more? You could use this in many ways. You can be creative. But these three magic words are what has helped me to listening to even my director's point of view and thought processes. Yeah, Jeffro, I want you to do something. Okay, you want me to do something? Uh, could you tell me more about it? And they start elaborating further, right? So that's the spot. So this is the listening part, right? So once they've talked everything, you could actually ask them, so do you just want support or do you want any kind of uh, suggestion? If they say they don't want suggestion, just leave it there ask them how you could help instead. If they want suggestion, then this is something that you could do for them. So suggestion, acknowledge their sharing. Hey, thank you so much for you know, opening up to me. Um, I really think that that was courageous of you to share something like that, something so personal. Um, would it be okay if I share something with you, something personal back to you, right? So ask for their permission to share something from your personal point of view. Then check with them, is it okay, right? So this is the part, check with them, is it okay to share what you wanna share? And once you've done that, either you could stop there, or if you have other things that you want, you can offer encouragement, you can offer help, assistance, resources, you can be creative about this point. So this is the one, two, three things, right? Again, coming back here would be, give your heart and then offer your hands. Not just in words, but also in your actions so that they may feel that someone truly cares for them. This is how we can opt to reduce stress for others, especially for those who are going through anxiety, going through severe stress, we can help to relieve some of those for them, right? So this is what we can do. Now, there's an interesting technique that I, I would like to introduce to you. And this is something that you could do for yourself so that you feel calm, you feel more relaxed, so that you can think better, focus, and even respond in a positive way to others. This is also a technique that you can teach your team if they want to, right? So I'm gonna invite all of you here to do this together with me. 
And uh, the next thing I'm going to share with you is something called the hand trace breathing, right? So it helps us calm down, help us focus, helps us think better. So before I go there, can I get all of you here the permission to do this together with me, right? Um, if that's okay with you, could you just type yes? Sure, Leslie says, sure. <laughs> Only Leslie, how about the rest? <laughs> so let's see how many of you here will be doing with me. Nadia says yes. Leslie says sure. <laughs> Would we have Rose? Rose, Mizuho. Okay, fantastic. Okay, let, let's go on here. Jerome as well, thank you very much. All right, okay. So how do we do this? Let me demonstrate to you and then we'll do it together. All right, so this goes in four steps. First thing, let me show you, you just need one hand and one finger. And of course, you're breathing because we're doing some breathing, but guide it with your hand. Second thing is we'll be gliding up. So as you slide up, you'll be breathing into your nose. As you reach to the top, you will hold your breath. As you slide down, you will exhale, let out your breath. So here's how it looks like. So one more time, I'm going to show you. In, hold, out. Right, so this is the three commands in, hold, and out. Right, so now we're going to do this together. What I want you to do right now is sit up straight, you know, sit up straight, make sure that you have some space around you so that you don't actually hit something. Sit up straight, your chest open allows you to breathe. Now, just want to be cautious with all of you. If you have your mask, you may need to pace accordingly. Maybe loosen that mask a bit. If you don't have the mask, then you're all good as well. Right, so here we go. Sit up straight, open your chest, put your hands together, and follow me. In. Hold. Out. In. Hold. Out. In. Hold, out. In, hold, and out. Last one. In, hold, and out completely. Just like that, you may breathe like normal again. <laughs> so how does this make you feel? How do you feel, right? Valerie, Jerome, Mizuho, Rose, how do you feel right now? Lastly, Dadia. If you calm, feel relaxed, good, relaxed, nice, right? So if that, if you're only doing it one time and you feel good, you feel relaxed, you feel all calm, you could do it as many times as you want. Just make sure this, if you're doing it at work, don't do it until you're too relaxed that you fall asleep. <laughs> Just don't do it until you fall asleep because this is a technique that helps people to sleep easily too. Right? Yes, uh, it has helped me to sleep really easily. It has helped many of my clients to do the same. Right, so just make sure that you do this. Now, uh, how often should you do this? If you would ask me, you should do this as often as possible. Maybe when you wake up, in between your work, and when you sleep, right? So that's something that could help re-energize you, relieve that stress, make you feel good again. Um, if you say, at the very least, how much can we do? Do one step like what you've done. In just two minutes, you start feeling that difference, right? So this is a very simple thing. Um, I found this uh, through a psychologist and I improvised it to make it fit to working professionals who are extremely busy. So if anyone here, you say that you're super busy, you can't find the time to exercise, to do anything, at least take two to five minutes to do this. Now, one tip, do not do this in front of people who don't know. They may get panic. I'll show you what it means. Imagine you're talking with someone and you feel a bit um, overwhelmed or nervous or anything like that and you start bringing your hand 
my goodness, that person would panic and run away. <laughs> they may think you're crazy. Oh my God, <laughs> please don't do this, right? And if you were to do this, don't tell them that I teach you. Don't say that Jeffro taught you this. <laughs> now, what you might want to do, if that happens in a situation that you feel uncomfortable or anything like that, and it's building up, walk away from that place, right? You may just want to excuse yourself, take a toilet break, take a, a pantry break, whichever that is, go to a place where you feel that you have your own space just like now and you do this hand trace breathing it takes two to five minutes even if it's just one round it would help you calm down so you want to do it until you're just calm enough and then you go back to that situation your workplace that conversation that meeting and continue on that person would then start seeing you as someone who is in control wow you're still steady, you're still calm, right? So this is something that has really helped me uh, before my presentation, during some of the heated meetings, and even servicing some of the clients that I have right now. Sometimes they can be quite demanding. <laughs> Breathing exercise is actually a great practice and a technique to relax. Definitely, definitely. There are many out there, box breathing, yoga breathing, and so forth. What I found is that this is the simplest that you can do in just two to five minutes. So if you have a combination, go explore it. If not, then at least you have this one for yourself. You could do it with your family. You could do it with your active kids, children running around. You could do it with them to calm them down. You could also do it with the team who may just need some relaxation. Just tell them, you know what? We're going to do a five minutes recreation. I'm going to show you something that I've learned. Here we do. Uh, here we go and let's do this. It's a really good team uh, connector as well. So that's what um, I would like to introduce to everyone here. <laughs> All right, so, um, so in short, that, those are the simple things, um, a little trick that you could do. Uh, that's what I thought, or I, rather I would say, that's where in my opinion would be really helpful in an instant where you need something just like that, right? So this is something that I, I practice um, and I still do it today, um, do it with a lot of my clients and I hope that it helps you too. The next thing that I want to share with you here is knowing that you have the techniques, you have the awareness, you have this particular technique that can help you. How else could you help others? You could also share appreciation with them. Now, I'm pretty sure we are all very familiar with saying thank you, but just tell them that I appreciate you. I appreciate you for what are the things that you do, or I'm grateful for the things that you do and give that specific example so that they feel connected. Uh, let me give you some examples here. Let me give you some examples right here. So you could say something like this. I appreciate you for your attention to details and your willingness to go the extra miles. I really like that you highlighted the gaps and concerns. You gave me an idea on when to improve. And I'm grateful for your warm welcome. It made me feel comfortable and part of that team. As simple as this, these words will help to encourage them will help lift them up and will help to reinforce positive behaviors. So you might want to consider doing this moving forward. Now, uh, so that's something that I want to share with you. On top of this, I would like to take the opportunity to also share a tool that could help you ease your work at the, at the workplace, ease your job, especially if those of you here, you're very focused in the HR department, and you're exploring or you're looking out for something that could save your time, especially the e-learning content, e-learning author, um, authorizing, you know, e-learning creation and authoring uh, capabilities, then I want to take a very quick moment to share with you what we have, right? A tool that could help ease your stress, ease your work and really speed things up. So what do I mean by that? Um, if I could just have your permission to do this, right? So I want to share with you very quickly about iSpring and not just iSpring itself, but what have other people gone through with iSpring. So this is something that I want to bring your attention to. Uh, this is with an Australian company called Alive. They are a non-profit organization. Let me just uh, arrange something here. Oops. So, oh, my, my slides is actually stuttering right now. Interesting. It got so excited to share with you this, <laughs> it's acting up. Let me see. Okay. So next. Yeah. So as you can see just now, some of the things pop up and I'm not sure what happened here. So 
Alive is a com uh, a MPO in Australia uh, for suicidal uh, present uh, prevention. What they have done with iSpring is that um, through the solutions and through the platform itself, they have managed to reach out to more than 78,000 individuals, youth, parents, and teachers. And what they have accomplished is an amazing reach to beyond 130 schools to increase resilience and positive responses. So there are more positive reports and updates on mental state. There are also cases and examples where the participants were standing up against bullies. So these are really positive things through the learning that was done in just under 24 hours to convert whatever that they have on paper or on their laptop offline into something that is easy ac easily accessible even on phone. Right? So that's amazing thing that they have done. Now, just to show you and showcase to you how they work, um, I'm going to just take a few minutes to show you a video so that it gives you an idea about it. Right? So I'm going to do I'm going to show you the video right now, and I hope that you could see this clearly too. All right, so let's go here. Welcome to iSpring Learn. If you just signed up for iSpring Learn and are not sure what to do next, you are in the right place. When you sign in, you will land on the iSpring dashboard. From here, you can see important information such as how many courses in your account, number of users and groups on your account, and if there are any assignments that are ready for evaluation. You will also see a side menu that will take you to the other areas of the LMS like courses, reports, events, and users. Let's click on users to check it out. By default, there is only one user for the account, you. You can add team members to your trial by selecting new user and filling out the required information, then selecting save. Or if you want to import new users, you can do so here. Once they've been added, you can view your courses or test the LMS. Now select messages. Here, you can get in touch with your learners or they can message you with any questions. Now let's jump into courses to look at how to add content to your account. Courses are created using iSpring authoring tool, iSpring Suite. They're uploaded to the LMS right from the tool. iSpring Suite is a desktop app that can be downloaded and installed to your computer. You can find a free trial of iSpring Suite at www.ispringsolutions.com. Here in the courses section, you can see there are sample courses created with iSpring Suite that have been pre-uploaded to iSpring Learn. You can upload all of your course content via web interface, including documents, presentations, SCORM packages, videos and audio podcasts, anything you use in your company in order to train your employees. Or you can create content right in the LMS. Once your course is uploaded, you can enroll any user that you have added to your account by selecting the course in the list and clicking Enroll Users. All enrolled people will get an email with a direct link to the course. You are currently signed in as admin, the person who can configure the portal, create content, and manage users. But you can easily jump to the user portal to see the LMS as a learner. Finally, you can check statistics to see how your learners progress. There are many different types of reports. You can generate reports including quiz, simulation and task reports, and more. Let's look at generating a report. And there you have it. This should give you enough information to get started with iSpring Learn. Now it's time to create your own courses with iSpring Suite and upload them to your iSpring Learn portal. Good luck. All right, so that's a very short uh, video, you know, on the cap uh, capabilities of iSpring. Um, there are many more. So if you are keen to find out more about how this could work or exploring that, um, there are trial versions of it. Um, you may want to reach out to um, the iSpring team who are very, very gracious people, wonderful folks who even organize this particular session for all of us here, reach out to them and find out how they could help you in taking that next step 
to exploring or to finding out how you could use this platform for yourself and your team, right? So that's a very quick thing. Um, and well, time flies, right? Time flies and we've covered our entire session for today. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed your session with us, you know, your activities, your responses with us. And um, just a quick short one here. This is what we've covered, um, enhance of awareness, the practical application itself. Um, and now I'd like to open up to everyone here if you have any questions, any questions that I may be able to share some perspective with you. If you do, um, please type that into the chat so that I can pick them up. Anyone here with any questions? Now, if you don't have any questions, then um, you may also type it into the chat. Clear means you have no questions. You're clear with what we have today. If you have no questions. All right, Valerie, thank you. So if there are no questions, or if some of you here, you're still typing some questions, uh, you can actually just type one so that I can give you more time. Type one if, you have, if you're thinking about a question, you haven't quite put it there, please let me know. Type one, then we can give you some time. For those of you here, you have no questions, all is clear for you. Type clear and thank you. <laughs> yes, very well, all right. Valerie, Mizuho, Jerome, all right. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to um, pass it back over to Nadia, who is the moderator for our session today, the lovely Nadia right here. Over to you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for this presentation. And I think that everything is clear for our attendees. They don't have any questions. And if someone just writes something, uh, we can wait a couple of minutes, and while we do that, I uh, want to share a link to the survey oh, yes. of the webinar. Please fulfill it after or during the webinar. It will help us better understand what you want from our webinar series. And uh, I think that we Great. don't have any questions. And thank you very much, thank Jeffrey. You. Thank you. Well, both, both are now my names. Uh, I'm <laughs> well, you. I'm more well known by Jeffrey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you. Yes, I remember I... that. <laughs> and thank everyone for coming and spending that valuable hour with us. And I hope you have enjoyed our today's session. Don't forget about the survey after the webinar. It will pop up after I close this window. And yeah. thank you. Everyone. Thank you, everyone. And so bye. if you have any questions that you may want to reach out to me at a later time, uh, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Instagram as well. Um, these are my uh, social media handles. Uh, feel free to do so. Um, if you just want to connect with me, uh, more than welcome, right, to say hello and, and stay friends. Uh, for those of you here, um, thank you so much for your time, participation, and even your responses as well. I know some of you here may be busy doing other things, but you're still here. You invested your ears for me so thank you so much uh, i wish you a wonderful day ahead uh, and if any of you here you are going through the Puasaman, the ramadan where you're fasting uh, happy fasting and i look forward to meeting you someday in person uh, maybe we can have more chats in different areas as well right until then take really good care and have a wonderful rest of the day Goodbye, everyone. Bye, have everyone. A great day.